Hello, everybody. Up and namaste. Up and namaste. Good. Hope you're all doing well. Now don't call us yep. Nam and Sir. It's very simple, very short name. Sumi, Amit. Just call us Sumi and Amit. No, no other things to be added, Suparna. Thank you. Okay, so shall we start with a prayer? Before that, let me go live. Okay. So let's close our eyes, connect down to the palate, inhale and exhale, relax your bodies. Inhale deeply, exhale slowly. Inhale peace, exhale all your stress, tension and worries. Inhale joy, exhale all your sorrows. Inhale love, exhale all your hate and anger. Inhale the light, exhale all the darkness within you. Inhale the light, exhale, spread it to your entire being. Inhale the light, exhale, share it with your family, smile at them. Inhale the light, exhale, share it with everyone who's gathering here today. Inhale the light, exhale, share it with the whole globe. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chua Koksi, to Lord Mahaguruji Neli, to all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, angels of knowledge, light, and power, especially the angels and teachers and the great masters of theosophy, to the angels and beings of communication and our respective Wi-Fi's, to our soul and divine self, we humbly ask for your great, great blessings, for your divine guidance, for your light, for your love, for your mercy, for your guidance, all through the session. Bless us with your light of knowledge, of wisdom and understanding, so all through the session we may have a deeper and clearer understanding of these priceless teachings being imparted to us today. Help us to absorb and assimilate it and become instrumental in becoming better instruments to do and serve you better. We thank you in full faith. We offer ourselves as instruments to do your work. Thank you, thank you, thank you. With gratitude, with deep respect and love, we thank you. Be aware of the energy, inhale and exhale. Slowly open your eyes with a smile. Atma Namaste everyone. Welcome to the chapter 10. Yes, we are still on top of the head. <laughs> Please share recording of chapter 9 and 10. Uh, well, we've had trouble because uh, the, the Vimeo did not go live. And uh, we have placed it there, but for some reason we can't find a way yet to access it. Yeah, so once we know how to access it for you, um, it's already there. We've, we've put it up there. The recordings are already there. We're just waiting. I to told see. you last time it won't go. <laughs> it's his thought for me. I don't blame me. <laughs> All right, do you want to go? Go. Yes. I forgot what I was going to say last time. You're supposed to start off with the spiritual. So. Okay, uh, I, I, I think we covered all this, right? We covered this, 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 we covered all this. All right. Spiritual. I think we finished this, right? Dematerialization and everything also. Did we finish this? I know you stopped at spiritual. I know exactly where. So why don't you just continue or go to the next one and sit down? Okay, so the crown depended on the heart and uh, okay. Okay. Spiritual. Um, 
It's a center for alchemy, the dematerialization center of your body. Uh, we already covered this, I think, in the last session, right? Let's see what it is. Someone maybe they're helping us out. Yes, we did. Ah, okay, we did. We did. Ah, okay. So we, we did it. <laughs> because I forgot it already. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, its function is positively and negatively impacted by thoughts and emotion. We spoke about this as well. So um, we'll skip that. Entry point of divine. Okay, I think that's where I think we stopped there. Let me see the chat. Atmanavasti to you. Um, so its functioning is positively and negatively impacted by thoughts and emotion. Um, so for example, um, if you say I'm the body, uh, I, or, or, you know, you, you, you don't recognize your true nature, that's your attitude, your thoughts and your emotion, or you say I reduce my faith or receptivity to the teacher by a certain amount, or you don't believe in a spiritual teacher then the energy coming towards you is less. That's why uh, many of the teachers, especially Master Chua's, you would say it's not, the, it's not the teacher that disconnects you from the student. It's the student that disconnects themselves from the teacher because they themselves feel they don't require it internally. And due to that psychological aspect, it gets the energy flow is reduced. And because of that, the energy coming down in the body, in all the systems, because remember the crown, the physical effect is energy coming to the crown has a, Activating effect on all the chakra and affects all the chakras has a flooding effect in the body. So all of them get affected, right? Um, because it's one of the major gateways into the energy body. All right. And vice versa. I think that's where I finish. When you say the Lord's prayer, I remember this. The Our Father. When you say, you know, you recognize where you truly come from, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we we'll skip that. Now, it is the, the spiritual um, component of the crown. It's the entry point of soul energy into the body. All right. And also, it's the exit point for the incarnated soul to reach higher buddhic or cosmic consciousness. So it is in and out center, okay? It's a gateway. All right, now, um, this is where it was, uh, what is buddhic consciousness? In case for those of you who don't know, don't doodle, please. <laughs> um, it's talking about direct comprehension and perception, okay? So the spiritual alchemical center, I already spoke about the golden aura after transmutation of sex energy, right? So this will go to the next one. Okay, spiritual. This is where it talks about the difference for those of you who are not um, familiar about the difference between buddhic intelligence and intuition and all that spiritually. Um, so mental intelligence is looking, uh, is knowing through study, through experimentation. This uses throat and ajna. Intelligence, intelligence is knowing through direct inner perception. It doesn't require study. The disciple just simply knows. Uh, this, there are usually no inner images or visions. Intuitive. So if you use the crown, there are no images. You just know. And you have no idea how you know. And you have no idea where it came from. It comes like a flash. But when you see visions, like sometimes Master Cho would see a flash. And sometimes while he was sleeping, especially when he is partially asleep, he would see visions. Now that uses the forehead along with the crown. Okay, working together. Anyway, why, why did I say that? Anyway, intuitive intelligence is called buddhichitta. Uh, sometimes it's called awakening to the truth. Um, that is, uh, intuitive intelligence is one of the inner tools frequently used by Master Choa. Right? So every time, you remember when we would ask him sometimes, I don't know, I'm sure he did the same thing in India, he would just look up like that yeah. for some time. No, usually at that angle. At that angle. And then he just pause it, everyone's just waiting. It's like, you know, there's communication happening. And they're like, okay, it's like this. And then he start talking. So yeah. that is using uh, the spiritual aspect of the crown, okay? And of course, the crown um, gives you the ability to experience, for you to experience who you are. Without the crown, there's no way for you to experience your true nature. Um, and it's a mandatory of the opening and a fully functional, uh, the full functionality of the crown is almost mandatory for uh, achieving oneness with the higher soul or achieving soul realization self -re or a high degree of self-realization and this is where Master Chua talks about it okay you are interested it's in these books now um, and it the crown has the ability to step down or to be a step down transformer it is the it has the ability to step down energy Okay, um, literally, 
Okay, we'll come back to that. Literally, you have to understand the concept of, if you remember, I think in the second or third or one of the chapters, I gave, um, when we were talking about, I gave a quote on the tree of life and we spoke about uh, how as above and so below. So there are different higher levels of tree of life. You have the tree of life on the physical aspect, that's us. You have the tree of life on the emotional, mental aspect. You have the tree of life on the causal aspect. You have the tree of life in the planetary logos. You have the tree of life in the solar logos. You have the tree of life of the you know, um, universal logo, galactic logo, all this. So it goes higher and higher and higher, but the tree of life. So all the crown, what, the, what is stepping down the energy is actually the crown chakra of all of this, okay? And when you also want to bless tomorrow, if you are uh, spiritually developing very fast and you want to bless someone, you use the crown, you use the energy of the crown to step down a high, high voltage into a voltage that the person can handle or if a teacher wants to do it, they need to use the crown, which is why we don't touch the crown of <laughs> teachers in general, okay? So here, from the crown energy center to the basic energy center, spiritual energy is stepped down, modified, transformed, and physicalized. These are very key words, especially the word physicalized. So it shows you that there is a technique that can take God's energy from whatever level and physicalize it. No more will shall be said on that. <laughs> okay. Um, Kether is the center for universal love. Okay. Um, now, this, it is also, the crown is also the center for will. But when we talk of will, we have the solar plexus, all right? We already spoke about that. I don't think so. We did. I did. And then we spoke about the higher will, all right? The mental. Now, this is the divine will, okay? This is the will, okay? Um, so, this is what the quote is about. Keter is the center. So, the will to manifest goodness, the will to do good, this is created through the Keter or the crown crown chakra okay um so you have to understand that this is known as the heart when you read the word heart you have to think about you have now something complicated going on because you have the crown being the center for will you have the crown being the center for love you have the crown performing multiple functions okay so you have to be very careful because if you read certain books and you don't understand this it can be very confusing for example the heart sutra uh, by lord buddha uh but talks about developing the heart, but what heart is he talking about? This heart? Most people would talk about this heart. When you say Heart Sutra, you're thinking this. But if you read the book very carefully, he says when you develop this heart, you will experience kum or nothingness. You'll become one with the ocean, you become one with the trees, one with the animals. So what heart is he talking about? He's talking about the divine heart. So can you imagine if you learn a technique and you start meditating on the wrong heart? <laughs> you are wasting your time. So this Teachings are very important so that you understand what uh, people are talking about and there are multiple levels of truth to it. Okay, so that is why for those of you who have done meditation, by the way, so it's very important to remember that this tree of life is there on higher levels also. Okay, just to give you a small, small idea, we don't want to go too much in detail. Uh, when you've done the meditation on twin hearts, you say from the center of the heart of God. When I used to first do this, I used to imagine like a center of God, you know, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I don't, I didn't know what to imagine after some time. And then after uh, for quite a few years, actually, I realized, and although I was told that the, I don't know what, um, the center of the heart of God, it's actually a center, an energy center, not the center. Okay, what center are they talking about? Not the middle, from the spiritual center of the heart of God. All right. The energy or the crown chakra of God, it's to your crown. Your crown has the ability to step down energy. Of course, there are other transformers in between that. All right. Uh, but the intention in this case makes the crown develop very, very quickly. That's why, um, that's why Twin Hunts is extremely powerful. This is only one level of truth, by the way. Just one. But something to think about, okay? Uh, so when you do the Twin Hunts, you focus on your crown. Now, this should give you a hint. You're focusing on the crown and you're seeing from the center the heart of God. So if you intend that it's from the center of the, the higher beings and the center of God, the crown connecting, try it when you do your twin hearts and see what happens. Now, of course, when you're looking at the crown, the crown, the Kali Yuga, it talks about in the origin of Madhim Pranic healing, um, has the effect on people only who are not spiritual level. Many people spend a long time on astrology. 
uh, and understanding is this a good time for me, not good time for me. It has a certain amount of influence, yes. But a yogi, if your crown is really big, you are spiritually one with God. It doesn't matter how far or slow or, or close God is, as long as the connection is strong and maintained, right? Like for example, it, if I'm talking to you and I have a really strong internet connection, it doesn't matter whether you're a group from Bangalore, you're a group from Dubai, or you're a group from America. All of you are listening to me right now. Because right now, uh, we are in a state of oneness. <laughs> <laughs> Technologically speaking. <laughs> okay? So it doesn't make a difference whether you're beside me or whether you're in Bangalore, in the city of Bangalore, or you're in Dubai, or you're in America. It doesn't make a difference. Because it's connected. Same thing energetically. Okay? Spiritual. More. I think we should. Okay. Now, this is a mandatory. The crown center is, we are looking at the spiritual function, spiritual aspects, right? Summary of the center on top of the head. This center is mandatory for the modern method of awakening and regulating the Kundalini energy. Okay, it's mandatory. Without the crown big, it is extremely dangerous to awaken the Kundalini energy because the, there is no higher principle to control the lower principle. And after two, three chapters, let's see what he talks about and then we'll go further into it, okay? Not high principle controlling the energy, the higher energy controlling the lower energy or the executive controlling the workers. So you need the old technique was from down to up. That is maybe okay in the old days when you're sitting in the ashram and you do not have Instagram and all sorts of uh, um, stimuli around. <laughs> okay, um, so it's mandatory. Let's move faster, otherwise we won't finish the other chapter. And now it is positively and negatively affected by the energy currents of the earth. So the crown chakra is very, very uh, uh, influenced by what direction you face. And more than that, we cannot talk about. So if you face a certain direction, uh, the crown becomes much, much bigger. The meditation, the exercise, everything becomes much more powerful. If you face another direction, it's almost 30% uh, less or much more or less. Yes, less. Much, much less than that, right? So, so it makes a big difference. So if the crown is influenced by the energy currents of the earth. And the crown chakra is very, very influenced or responsive to the Gayatri Mantra. I think more if I go in detail, this chapter will not end. So I think that is enough. We have studied the crown, at least the form aspect and uh, certain other aspects in quite the detail. Um, so the Gayatri Mantra, the, you see there are many books on it, but the predominant, uh, the meaning of it is you're asking the soul logos to energize your intuitive and buddhic faculty. All right, and then there are certain techniques to ma make it more powerful. Um, but the Gayatri Mantra specializes in mental development, but not just any mental. It's not talking about the Agni Chakra. It's talking about the forehead and the crown, not the Agni and throat. When you're asking for intelligence, so many people they invoking intelligence. Your intelligence understanding is only here and here, but you have to look here and here. These are very important also. Okay, so just to summarize all of this. You know, sometimes the first time I saw Master Choa, uh, he was a big guy in a suit, right? In a navy blue suit. Was it navy blue or was it green? It was navy blue, I think. I was like amazed, you know, this teacher, yogi, wearing this suit and coming on stage uh, for, for a class or for a darshan, right? Uh, do you know, so later on we asked him, Master, why do you wear a suit? Why do you not, you know, you know why not wear yogic clothes? Uh, he says yogi clothes are good, but today's day and age, he needs to manifest the divine plan. So the divine plan, he wants to manifest the divine plan into physical reality. That requires practicality and it requires intelligence. Okay, remember I'm just summarizing the four chakras we're talking about. All right. So if you touch your crown, you say divine plan. You get the divine plan, the will to do good. All right. Then you touch your forehead, you say, you see the divine plan. You see the whole vision of the divine plan manifesting, all right? Then you touch your ajna, you touch your throat. That is formulating the plan to manifest the objective. You touch your heart. This is the good heart. The whole action, all of this is motivated by good heart, all right? And then you have the solar plexus. This is the will, all right? And you have the navel on earth as it is in heaven. Again, I'm started with it. I'm ending with it. <laughs> All right. So that is the that is mean that is the meaning of manifesting the divine plan through production. You know, Master would always say, being he would call a, he would call people fairies. <laughs> you know, like 
what is it, Tambalina or Tinkerbell? Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell. Uh, but she's very productive. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, he's saying being a fairy is nice. He would do this. Being a fairy is nice. But what are you going to do <laughs> after becoming a fairy? Your hand must reach to heaven, but he will always say your feet must be rooted to ground to the ground. You must be able to bring the heaven into earth, not just go to heaven. That is what he said we need to do. I mean, for Arhatic uh, yogis or who have been practicing a long time. For many people, they're just looking to go to heaven. But he says at some point, you have to want to bring the heaven into the earth. Manifest heaven on earth. And what is heaven to you? Good thought, good words, good speech, all of that. He says like St. Francis of Assisi did it. Paramahansa Yogananda did it. These are not fairies. These are actual workers. They're not fairies. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I, uh, when Amit was saying this, I was just remembering. When we talk about Master Cho and we talk about all this, uh, these amazing teachings that he gives us, which comes down. In the end, we say, yes, the twin hearts. But in, at, at the end of everything, there is always service associated, especially for us Arhatic yogis. So it's not just doing twin hearts and you know blessing the earth with love and peace and harmony, which is one way of service. He also would like us to physically actually go, go out there and do work to help others. Yes. Uh, so whether it's a crisis period because there's an earthquake, uh, because there's uh, a flood, he would actually get us to take the money, send it to those people. And after that, actually follow through to see to it that the money was actually used properly. And I remember um, when the tsunami hit, right, and it hit even Sri Lanka, um, he actually made me go there after we gave the money to go and see the places where we actually provided funds. Uh, it was partially to the school and pass, partially to the, to the town on that end. And uh, it, 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 was, it was amazing to see what we, could, we can do. Uh, so it doesn't just end with blessings with the hand. It's actually using the hands with action. So the navel chakra that he was talking about, the heart is goodwill and the navel is the will to do good, which again further affects the basic chakra, which gets us to actually go out there and do it in action. So love in action, love in motion, which manifests as physical service is another way to show that the love here has ultimately come there to help people. Now, regardless of whether they were pranic healers or not, it, it, it didn't matter to Master Chua. It mattered that we did something. Uh, in Chennai, uh, they actually took care of a whole village, including providing them with boats because they lost their boats, helping the fishermen with other things that they required. So rehabil rehabilitation of a particular uh, town or city, or in this case, a village which is much smaller, is something that Master Chua would always ask us to do. Right, and so that's why we we continue to have charity activities in all uh, states, especially the larger states, so that we are not only talking about healing, we're not only talking about spiritual teachings, but then manifestation of that spiritual teaching. Otherwise, it's all jnana yoga, right? It's all knowledge based. Master Chua says, "Great, but what are you going to do with all that knowledge? You have to go out there and do it." And that's why he says you need to have then karma yogis, right? And so karma yoga is action action is karma and so love in action is service yeah so there are many ways you see in pranic healing we talk about the interconnection of chakras on the physical level but you can talk about the interconnection of chakras in this emotional level mental level spiritual level higher level it becomes very deep when you're looking at energy centers luckily we're just doing the three double so we don't need to um, now we're going into discharging discharging doesn't it sound very different for us here in this world yeah discharging is always something else <laughs> but anyway get rid of something you don't need <laughs> yeah it is it is getting rid of something that we don't require so when we look at discharging they start off we're talking about our physical body so they say how because that's the easiest for us to relate right so they first talk about this physical body how we tend to discharge through the five excretory organs which is the skin Yes, your lungs, uh, your liver, your intestines, and your kidneys. And so through these systems, as we already know, we tend to then expel out all waste products that we do not require. And so it says similarly, even our etheric body tends to also discharge. And so what does it do? Uh, the physical body basically takes in all the food that we, uh, we have. And then whatever material is required for the body is taken in 
and what is uh, not required, the waste material is, is let out, right? And the etheric body also takes part of what it requires. Remember, the etheric body is also called the pranamaya kosha. So the kosha or the body that requires prana to survive. And so some of the prana that it actually gets is supplied by the physical food we have. Because the food, remember, has absorbed also all the different types of prana. Whether it's air prana, whether it's sun prana or ground prana, it has absorbed it. So when you have food, you also have prana within the food, not just the nutrition that we're talking about. And so that is one way of getting uh, prana into the body. And the other is the vitality globules through the various energy centers, through our entire system. However, once that is used, yes, it has to also be expelled or discharged from the system. And so it has various ways in which uh, the etheric body also tends to discharge what it does not require. Now the chart that they've shown, um, the, the little round circles is basically the, yeah, so it's basically what we're trying to expel, yeah? So um, let me just open up that so it becomes it's easier. Yeah. yeah, we'll just open it up so they can all see it down. So we'll go there. So now chapter 11, that's where we are. And we're going to move on to the next part. And so if you look at this image, this is what we're talking about you'll find that the chart actually shows those little globules are basically the vitality globules that are moving out after it's been consumed. So it says through the breath, that is how we breathe and the pores of the skin are expelled the bluish white particles. Remember when, remember the, the uh, vitality globule with the pink in the center and the rest around it, the seven. Now, when that is consumed by the body, which comes through the spleen, yes, and then gets spread through those five channels, once it is consumed, then it becomes what you call that bluish white particle. So the bluish white particle is basically a globule that has, has been absorbed by the body based on what it's required and what is not required, what is left behind, the shell kind of, that is what the bluish white particle is. And it's usually expelled coming to the surface of our skin, yes, the pore, and then getting expelled through the health rays. So that's how it goes out. So just to show you, so through the breath and the pores, this bluish white particle is then released out of our system. So the prana, which has been extracted from it, yes, it's all consumed. And then the white, bluish white particle is released. However, remember there are certain people whose spleen is doing such a wonderful job that they get so much vitality uh, globules into it that they are able to absorb what is required for their body, but at the same time, there's still so much excess, which has not yet been used, which again gets expelled through the pores. And that's why, remember we said, if, if that kind of a person is around, uh, he will actually help people who are sick also get healthy because he's constantly, he's like a, uh, like a little uh, battery uh, walking around and anybody can just plug in and take the excess prana that he does not require. At the same time, he's healthy. And so they're talking about such particles still charged with the rose colored prana. Remember that's the most crucial for the sustenance of the physical body. Yes, and the nervous system. So these people who have excess uh, prana within them, part of this rose colored prana are also not con completely absorbed into their body. And so it gets released out of their body. Uh, so it says here, such particles still charged with rose colored prana as are superfluous to the requirements of the body and also the atom from the blue rays used by the throat center. So along with this uh, rose red prana, yes, uh, also are atoms from the throat where the blue goes, uh, the blue and the violet heads, that is also, if not required, discharge. That's my understanding. Now, with reference to the ex uh, extra, sorry, the uh, organs through which we excrete on a regular basis, especially in the morning, that actually helps uh, release the excess or, or the used up green prana. The green prana that's not uh, that's already been used then 
comes out with the waste matter from our system. So they say through these organs pass emptied atoms of green prana. So remember from the spleen, the green goes towards the digestive area, right? Which they call the navel, but it's actually when we understood the solar plexus. So the green goes there and from the digestive system, and sometimes in the case of, remember there were two type of people that they were talking about, uh, the ordinary and the developed. Uh, so whatever that means. Now the ordinary person, because they're not able to take the orange red prana from the basic chakra and send it up upwards, they're unable to do that. Then when the waste matter releases from the digestive tract outside, not only is the green that is not consumed, but also the red and orange that's not consumed will also then be released out. However, when a man is more developed, he's allowed, he is then able to uh, take the reddish orange prana from the basic chakra and then transmute it through. Remember, we have a lot of uh, chakras and send it all the way up. Yes. And as it goes up, it is required by different parts of the body. And remember, uh, especially the energy in the lower two chakras right, which have orange and red, the sex chakra and the basic chakra, are essential for our brain, is essential for the love factor, it's essential for the intelligence factor, it's, it's important for the spiritual factor. And so as spiritual beings, as we want to evolve, we need more of this energy to start coming up. If you do not want to get senile when you grow old, then this energy needs to constantly keep climbing up. Now the problem is when we do not have enough orange red prana, within the two lower chakras. When that starts to reduce, then it starts affecting the functioning of all the physical organs here and the energy centers in the upper part of the body. And so it's very essential to have this. And uh, more important for us at this point, 100 years later, is definitely to try and see to it that this orange red prana they're referring to is transformed and transmuted into higher energies going up to the higher chakras and towards the brain, yes? And then lastly, they talk about on the top of the head uh, passes the atoms that go towards the brain. Remember, it's that uh, dark bluish, which they say goes to the lower part of the head and the violet that goes up into the crown, especially the periphery, the 960 petals. So from there, again, it gets released out. So these are some of the exit points they're talking about. Um, now, uh, when they talk about this reddish orange prana or orange red, uh, reddish orange, yes, reddish orange rays as they call it, goes from the basic all the way up to the crown. When it actually reaches the crown, then they say it looks like a flame. And so that's why in the sentence here, it says frequently shown as a flame in ancient Buddhist uh, statues of Lord Buddha. And even sometimes other saints. So if you go to Sri Lanka, if you go to um, Thailand, if you go to Singapore, you'll notice that uh, sometimes the images of uh, Buddha has like this, this flame on top. Yeah, I thought it was a crown at one point, but then I realized it doesn't really look like the crown because it's directly in the center. And that's when I realized it's probably uh, the golden flame that we refer to, the 12 petals. That's my understanding. Yeah, so that's the flame on top of the head. You can go ahead. Sorry, I, I didn't realize I've got this thing on still. Do you have any questions about what was said? Hold on. <laughs> yeah, because Amit is... <laughs> no, I, ha I just want to know what to talk about because I don't see the use of this chapter. They may not be used, we're just okay. studying when it. When you use the word of uh, discharge, uh, it's not necessarily an excretion, just like the, because it starts that way. So it feels like, you know, discharge as you have discharge in certain areas of your body, which could be a way of your body cleansing itself, protecting itself, or it could be a sign of infection. But it's not necessarily, uh, from my point of view, something that is used up and sent out of the body. It could be, it could be something that is being transmuted and sent out of the body. It could be uh, energy emanating from the body. You see, there are many broad, anything coming out of the body, if the author terms it as discharge, it's discharge. So if you project prana out of your body like that, and they see coming out, they'll say the word discharge. And then they think your hand is discharging energy. But it's not really discharging, you are projecting energy. You have to understand the word discharge is very uh, ge generic. It's not specific, okay? But here it, it does... Uh, specify a few things 
uh, this is a, probably one part of the chapter is basically saying we have looked in chapter two how prana enters the body. And now you're looking at, okay, now once it's used, how does prana exit the body? All right. Um, and if there was a way to gauge it, you can realize how if by, by the amount of prana exiting the body, you can realize whether the material is being used properly or not, whether the assimilation of energy is proper or not, and then you could help people um, and you can understand uh, how strong the chakras are and how they're working. Because sometimes when excess energy is sent out, it's not only because it, it, it's excess, because there is a problem in the body uh, with the navel or certain energy centers and it cannot be assimilated by the body. Okay. Like for example, obviously when a person is going to die, they cannot assimilate, they'll just throw out the energy. They'll discharge the energy out. Yeah, even though it's healthy energy, it cannot uh, get assimilated or absorbed. Not because they have excess. But <laughs> it's because of the lack of ability to assimilate. Yeah, lack of ability. Same thing with very older people, with kids. There, there are many factors. So when I look at this chapter, there are about 50 things coming in and two hours of work <laughs> coming into this. But um, so the first part Sumi's already spoken about and the charge of the discharge. You know, when you look at the chart, for example, um, like I said, when you're looking at Killian photography, is, is it the discharge that capture? That's why I'm saying the word discharge is, uh, is extremely general. Now, if I look at this picture, this is almost a perfect picture for what should have been the arrow pointing downwards from the top and upwards from the bottom. In chapter two, they looked at only one source of entry point for prana. But now they're looking at uh, prana exiting from the top. They're at prana exiting from the bottom. They're looking at prana exiting from the front. They're looking at prana exiting from the back. And, and, the, and, and the sides. And the spleen is not um, removing anything. <laughs> so it, it, it gives an idea that the spleen is constantly in a motion of receiving. And then everything comes out that way, which is not true. If the spleen does that, the spleen will explode. Okay. Um, so actually, these are the entry points into the body, just to be clear. This is what we had spoke about in the other chapters. You have the top of the head, which is the entry point of spiritual energy. You have the bottom of the body, which is the entry point of ground prana. You have the spleen with, and the lungs, uh, the spleen from the front, which is the entry point of air vitality globules. And you have the lungs and the heart chakra from the back, which is the entry point again and the nose of vitality globules, and also the mouth with the food. So this can be looked at as input and output. So when it comes in, it has to go out, <laughs> okay? So it comes in and it goes out. For me, it's pretty straightforward. What is confusing is this developed person. How come a developed person doesn't excrete? <laughs> so that got me thinking into what are they talking about? They just said that they used up uh, useless energy, supposedly the shell is uh, ejected out. And now they're saying, but if you're developed, you don't need to eject. You eject it from the top. Why do you need to eject from the top? I know Master Choi used to go to the bathroom also. So, <laughs> no, everyone, you know, at some point, you know, Master Choi had to explain, look, I'm a teacher. I have all the functions as a normal human being, but I've been a human body. Because some people could not realize he was going to the toilet. Uh, <laughs> but remember also, like he said, uh, even the chakras are constantly absorbing actually and constantly also releasing. So that's why that motion is also important to sustain uh, both the chakra and also the organs under it. So let's study this a little deeper, okay? We look at the second paragraph. Through the breath and pores of the skin are expelled both the bluish white, white particles from, okay, forget the color, it's not important. Um, because it could be different colors. If I look at a person who has cancer, obviously the emanation is not going to be bluish white. And if I look at a person who's just in twin huts, after that, I'm, I can guarantee you it's not going to be bluish white. And if I look at a person who eats a lot of uh, uh, diet is not good. So there are many factors. So forget about the color for now. Um, so which is excess is gone. And so Sumi's spoken about the excess part, but what is the pores of the skin? I've explained this a little bit and Sumi just hinted at it again. What is the pores of the skin and where does the health rays come in? Okay, this was talked about in the health aura part in chapter two or three or something like that, in the spleen or when somewhere. Okay, <laughs> now if you look at the etheric body, according to the book, it's about one quarter of an inch away from the body, right? And then the chakras also are there. And on this body, you have pores. You have pores all over. 
the pores is like your, you know, it's just like your shower head. <laughs> okay, you had a shower, you have a shower. So you have the shower head and the pore is the key through which it comes in and goes out. But attach the pore, when it exits, it forms a stream. That stream, like the water coming out, is called the health ray. Jets. Like a jet, if it's strong. If your water pressure is low <laughs> and there's not enough pumping going on or less water, it starts to droop. So sometimes, you know, you don't have proper shower, you can make out, but compared to uh, if, if you have a pressure pump or the water is very good, like in having in a five-star hotel. So you have these certain pores on the jet of the shower jet, and then all water comes out. So you have pores out of your, on your body all over, like little pimples, okay? And then out of that, it, the energy comes out. That energy that comes out is called the health ray. But the way it's explained is not complete. Okay, if you want the complete explanation, this health ray, the, this pore, forget the health ray. When the energy comes out, it's a ray of energy. Um, and we explained about how it promotes and removes, uh, you know, uh, protects you against different things. But you can use this pore most of the time to exit or throw out energy. And with the proper training, you can use this pore to pull in tremendous amount of energy so that you're not only absorbing energy through your chakras or through these four points only, one, two, whatever points, you are absorbing it from those four points plus all over your body. So the amount of energy that comes in is very, very um, high, okay? It's tremendous, okay? Uh, that is the principle behind the poor breathing technique in the Miracles to Pranic Healing book. All right, and then it talks about um, through the lower excretory organs past the emptied atoms of the green ray from the digestive system and also the ordinary man, those of the, okay. This is very confusing. I don't know whether it really comes out because energy just doesn't, you know, just like feces can stay in the intestine, energy cannot stay that way. Energy has to move, it, it, you know, it, it, it's, it's fluidic. It, it cannot just, I'm waiting, you know, you need to go to the bathroom. It doesn't happen that way. It will exit out. Uh, so, so it will exit also from the chakra, right? Like from yeah. the navel chakra, it will we'll come out from out the solar the, plexus, from the, the sex chakra, from the, the basic chakra yeah, as well. It will exit out through the chakras. Anyway, I don't think it's that important. Through the top of the head. Now, I think it's important because <laughs> sometimes, I don't think exiting is more important because this orange red thing is what gets me seriously because it says you just said it's not important because it's because important. these are the lower excretory organs and they're using this green ray and then in this the case of ordinary man those of, of okay sorry in, in the case <laughs> of the ordinary um, man those of red orange ray so I'm like that is where, that is where it confuses so there it hints to me that when they're saying in a developed person however who has achieved the deflection upwards of the red orange ray, the particles from this red ray are discharged through the top of the head. Yeah. Uh, these form a fiery cascade frequently shown as a flame in ancient statues of the Buddha and other saints. So on one hand, they're talking about the removal of these discharged particles, which are green, uh, you know, which were green, yeah, after it's been used. After it's used? Did they yeah. say the word after it's used? Yeah, and then... Past the empty atoms of the green ray. Yeah. But it does not say the empty atoms of the red orange ray. It just says those of the red orange ray. So the way this is phrased is very confusing because it's in the same paragraph. The empty particles of the green ray, yes, is ejected. But the empty particles of the red orange ray is not mentioned. It just says red orange ray. And then it says... In developed person, however, the achieved def uh, the who has achieved deflection upwards of red orange ray, the particles are discharged about. Okay, um, this for me is sex energy, reddish orange. If you look at a very healthy sex chakra, it's no, I don't want to use the word beautiful, but it's very vibrant reddish orange. And this for me, the the upward formation of that on a higher level could be building of the antakarna. Okay. On the lower level, it could be the sprinkling effect and of, of still lower but higher level, it could be the sprinkling effect of the energy. When the energy at the bottom goes to the energy to the top, it sprinkles out. It does not come out like a straight line. It comes out in a fountain format, you know, like a fountain. That's why when you do the uh, transportation, when Ma Master Cho would guide us, he'd be like, okay, why don't you do the, uh, your hands like this? 
to promote the sprinkling effect. So energetically, when you look at the person, there is actually a sprinkling effect. Now, if you read the book uh, that this is referring to, Hidden Side of Things, but it's not really Hidden Side of Things. It is, what is the book about Freemasonry? Secret of the Freemasonry? I don't know, one of the books by Lebiter. And also, if you remember what was discussed on page 38 of the Base of Spine Center, it clarifies this red-orange energy. So it says when the red or orange energy for normal people, it's there, it goes into the sex chakra or it look, it sex or to vitalize the sex organ if the person is dominated by the lower nature. So that means that the person has a puritanical attitude. And when, it, when you look at the other book by Ledbeater, Bishop Ledbeater, he talks about if the person is still obsessed with the flesh, I'm presuming of other people. And I'm presuming not to eat it, but to do what you do with the sex chakra with the flesh. He did not call, he did not specify. Okay, I got it. Uh, so, um, so you, you, so he says, if you're obsessed with the flesh, it would stay in the lower, uh, the red orange, it would stay in the lower energy center or in the uh, sex organs because they don't talk about the sex chakra. However, if the person has uh, overcome his desire for the flesh, has understood blah, 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 and you know, higher nature, blah, blah, blah. So basically, he's talking about transmutation of sex energy. It goes from the lower energies, not only from the front, but also from the back. This reddish orange energy goes up and forms a stream or discharge up, up the body. It is not an excretory discharge. It is transmutation of a lower energy into higher energy. Okay, let me explain. So you have here in pore breathing, you just simply inhale fresh prana through the pores, exhale. So here it talks about not only discharging or removing the energy, you can also use it with proper training to absorb energy through all these pores. So can you imagine, instead of absorbing from a few chakras, if you can absorb from all over your body, how much energy you can get, okay? Aha, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> discharge <laughs> so what is the color at the bottom reddish orange reddish orange turning into gold Ta -ta 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 -ta. what nothing anyway. i'm excited that you're excited so okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay so that is also to do with awakening of kundalini energy all right okay shall we yeah. So, uh, Sajal, you mentioned that uh, it could be physical purification. That's partially correct. Uh, but you've got to remember that uh, physical is only with the physical body. When we're talking about etheric purification, that's completely different. And even in master's etheric purification, there's a lot of other things that are mentioned. So that could be partially right. All right. Now, this part. Now, we're coming to the next paragraph, which says, atoms which have been emptied of prana. Sorry, before that. Uh, Balachandra, you're correct. You discharge <laughs> in the Kundalini, in, the, in meditation, in the inner breath. <laughs> but Master Chowa, you know, it's, it's 2000, so he doesn't say, now he says, let go. He doesn't say, discharge. <laughs> <laughs> Even with let go, you don't know what people are doing. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not holding on to anything. <laughs> I was never holding on to anything. What do you mean that go? <laughs> okay, so discharge, they might just discharge something else. Anyway, so moving on to the atoms that have been emptied of prana, uh, they say become once more um, precisely like any other atom. Now, I don't, I don't understand what they mean by this because they're saying that it's emptied, but it becomes once more precisely like that. I presume something's happening to them. So it says some of them gets absorbed by the body, right? and enter into the various combinations which are naturally occurring there. So, uh, but I'm wondering if it's empty, it doesn't bring anything. And so then what is it going to combine with and what is it going to create? Basically, they're talking about, I'll skip this, they're talking about recycling. You remember the empty No, I know uh, recycling, shell but it, it, it's it done outside, right? Yeah, it's gone out. No, and it's then going back into the body. Yeah, after revitalized. Okay, I presume that's a step that's missing because if I think of them being empty and coming back into the body and then combining, I don't see uh, how that's possible because it's, it's like uh, bringing an empty because vessel and saying... The, the reason is confusing because when they say they emptied of prana, they did not mention what type of prana. It doesn't say all the prana. Might, even maybe if, the rose even if prana it is, is even if it's emptied, yeah, emptied atoms of green, for example, right? If that's an emptied atom with no prana in it, or even if it has some, or, uh, some uh, rose red or rose color, it's still not enough. 
And right. whose body is it absorbed? I don't know. Earthworms? <laughs> so maybe someone else's garbage <laughs> is someone's food. I don't know. <laughs> it's so big. You know, it is absorbed by the body. Whose body? Where? What? How? Right. So and it says only some of them gets absorbed by the body and enter into various combinations which are constantly being made. While others, which are not yet required, are thrown off through any convenient channel. So I presume this is where the person, for example, we spoke about where the spleen uh, chakra is uh, overworking and is, a, and is able to absorb so much prana. <laughs> She's absorbing my car carbon dioxide. Maybe it means that. So, you know. Yeah, it could mean that. <laughs> okay. No, I mean like, you know, when you That's exhale, someone else will inhale your, you know, stuff. So, you know, it's... Um, True, so... It's just empty stuff being taken in. Yes, but... but <laughs> It's constantly being made, God bless you, while others which are not required are thrown out. So I'm presuming, presuming this is the same thing that we spoke about earlier, where the person's spleen chakra is doing such uh, amazing work that uh, there's so much prana that they can actually give out uh, even prana with the rose red in it, right? So that's my understanding. I could be wrong about that. You could just be absorbing anything. You like, could be absorbing just anything. like Sumi absorbed my... Okay, let's see what else you can absorb. Just wait. The next paragraph. All right. So it says, in addition to the up above, the matter of the etheric double. So we're going back to the energy body. Itself is also constantly being thrown out of the body through the pores of the skin, which means from the surface of my skin and the health rays that, that come out perpendicular, right? Uh, it's constantly also discharging. Okay, if, if I could use that word here as well, it's constantly releasing or throwing out, th throwing out uh, from my body at a constant, uh, it doesn't stop at all, right? So whether you're physically healthy, whether you're physically sick, it is constantly throwing out from the pores of the skin, just as uh, in ga gaseous matter. Consequently, persons who are near <laughs> to one another are liable to absorb each other's etheric uh, emanation and so the point being that if I am healthy what I am releasing of course is, is also waste uh, to an extent because I've hopefully used all the atoms and all the prana within the atoms but sometimes I might also be giving out prana which is still healthy because it still has some good amount of prana within it especially the rose uh, colored but maybe if the person seated next to me is not feeling so well while I discharge something that might be still healthy, what he might discharge might be unhealthy. And so that's why when you sit next to someone, not only do we have the vampires who suck out energy, but even constantly I'm emanating this. Now, even if I'm not here anymore, in, in this space, if I've emanated some kind of discharge, which is not healthy, <laughs> and I walked away and someone else comes and sits in this chair, he or she might also absorb what I had already released here. Right, energetically speaking. And that's why sometimes when you go into a hospital, when you go to certain places, even though you were healthy when you went in, when you come out, you don't feel so good. Because your pores, just like they're releasing, it says, uh, we also absorb. It also says, and the other, liable to absorb each other's etheric emanation. And they're only talking about the pores of the skin. So I presume from this, yes, from the health rays, not only am I releasing, but I'm also absorbing. And so if I'm in a healthy state for a longer period of time, then I stay healthy. But if I'm not, for whatever reason, it could be because I'm physically not okay, emotionally not okay, mentally not okay, that can affect my health aura and my health rates, and I could also fall sick. Yeah, should okay. you go? Now, when you're looking at the uh, image again, and you're looking at the excretory organ and all that stuff, you have to understand one thing very carefully. The... Um, Many times people are only worried about, I was, I was wondering why this cha chapter is useful. I think now it's useful <laughs> because many times we are always wondering about how much energy is coming into our body. All right. Well, we want to learn techniques that absorb massive amount of energy. We want to do meditation that absorb massive amount of spiritual energy. We want everything coming in. We want more physicalized energy, etheric energy to rejuvenate the body. But we are not looking at sometimes, that's why exercise and all these things are important because we have to also look at discharging of energy and letting go of energy. For example, in that one, where the perineum is, if that is blocked, 
and that energy cannot come out, it's going to create a lot of problems. You're going to probably get hemorrhoids. You're going to probably have all sorts of issues because the energy will start to build up there and become probably dirty red with the excessive accumulation. And that will cause all sorts of issues in the intestine, intestines or in the um, sex organs. Uh, maybe you'll get UTI infections regularly. All sorts of stuff can manifest. These are internal factors. Of course, there are external factors to disease. Um, now, what are we talking about? Now, when we're looking at... Um, Just the emanations. The emanation. The uh, atoms which have been emptied... I can't believe we've done only three paragraphs, man. Uh, atoms which have been emptied of prana become more, once more precisely like other atoms. Some of them are absorbed into the body and enter into the various combinations and constantly in it, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what? Anyway, so what they're trying to say is, you know, I've always wondered if the energy, when you read this book, you see the sun comes in and revitalizes all the globules, right? I was not joking when I was breathing next to Sumi, by the way. Um, <laughs> partially not joking. Um, when all the prana comes in, it revitalizes the globules. Everything is the same source. How come uh, when I'm breathing in the city, uh, I'm less revitalized compared to breathing in the mountain area or breathing in outside the city or the suburb area or in a place in like a park. How come there's a difference there compared to here? If all the source is the sun and everything is energized the same way, then how come there's a difference of energy? How come there's a difference of energy like that? So one of the explanations could be when there's, you're in a city, apart from the stress, I'm looking just etheric, right? Uh, there are so many people absorbing a limited amount of vitality in a city. So maybe the amount of globules per square inch, we do not know how many globules there are, is so and so. But as the population increases, and as people become more active, people are working, people are eating, people are running, people are rushing, life is getting tough. They are trying to absorb more and more of this vitality energy and giving out more and more empty shelves. And the people walking around them are absorbing empty shelves. <laughs> Not all, that's why it says partially, partially. Not all, but a lot of empty shells are being absorbed. So when it comes into the spray, the spray is like, what's this? This is empty, <laughs> all right? So before it can go wherever it needs to go and get recharged, it is being sucked in by someone else, right? So when you do yoga in a house, in your city, and then you go to the lawn in a place far away and you do yoga there, there is a huge amount of difference. You ask any practitioner. Or oh, you go How to the Himalayas and do it. Yes, all right? So because the amount of, uh, suction people, uh, <laughs> you know, the population is lower and there are less people per square meter, forget square inch. After some time, you look at square inch, right? So, I think so, the ashram is a good example. Yeah, I mean, this is for open, so I'm just talking. So, if you go to ashram or these private places, it really, really uh, makes a difference. So, that's what I think it means. I could be wrong, all right? Uh, so, now, consequently, a person who's near another is able to absorb each other etheric. Yes. And sometimes the etheric emission could be good. Sometimes the etheric emission may not be good, just like Sumi was talking about. Sometimes it could be, that's the principle of contamination. So, uh, so sometimes you're absorbing not only empty shells, but diseased shells. <laughs> you know? So, so that is even worse. <laughs> okay? So your body has to do more work to clean that garbage from someone else. Correct, Sajal. So that's why you mentioned, that's why shields are so useful. Yeah, so that's why sometimes when uh, you wear someone else's watch, for example, uh, it has a lot of emanations of etheric energy, like what Sumi was talking about, the chair. It could be an object. It could be a necklace that someone was wearing for a long, long time and had a very, very serious uh, illness. And because of that, the emanation coming out of the pores is continuously filled with uh, contaminated energy. The body is continuously trying to cleanse itself and this uh, uh, metal has a tendency to hold energy, just like water. It starts to hold all this disease energy. So when you start to wear it later on, it starts to get affected. Like one of the, uh, 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 Master Cho was trying to heal someone, a lady. I don't know whether it was a ring or what. And she had cancer. No, she had no cancer. She had, I forgot what she had, tumor or what. But no, she didn't have cancer. The, the daughter no, she, didn't, she didn't have cancer oh. yet. She was sick. So he was healing her. And every time he'd heal her, the chuckle condition would go back the same. And then he'd be like, and somehow, intuitively, he asked, where did you get that ring? He's like, ah, it's my mother's. And then the, he asked, ah, where's your mother? Oh, she passed away. Ah, how did she die? Oh, she had cancer. Okay. Uh, where did she get it? Uh, from her mother. 
my grandmother. Oh, where did you, what happened to your grandmother? Ah, oh, she died, cancer. <laughs> He's like, could you please take off that ring? <laughs> we, she removed the ring, he cleaned the ring out and barely any healing on the patient. The patient got healed. The patient didn't have cancer yet, but she had a chronic issue. I, I forgot the details. Okay, so this is, it's already 7.30. So this is something very, very um, interesting. You want to continue or what? Why don't you just finish with that part? I finished. Well, that's from the fingers, no? No, th you didn't do this. No. Oh, is it the fingers? Yeah. Ah, okay. So we'll stop? Yeah. Okay, we'll stop. Bye. <laughs> I thought we'll finish this whole chapter. Mm. Yeah, because uh, uh, crown took like half yeah, an hour. Sorry, I took. And then some people are asking about the shawl. Then you're not looking about the crown only. Then you're looking at like supplements for the crown chakra. You know, like you have, you know, vitamin supplements. So then you have shawl, then you have leg position, then you have hand position, then you have oils. And then my God, this thing will not end. <laughs> supplements for the crown. <laughs> Development of the crown. Okay. So. Uh, Question. Yeah. Now with reference to orange, uh, when you're talking about appendicitis, I know we're going to advance around healing. Uh, we, we're talking about not using orange in the area where the appendix is, which is the uh, the right side of the body, right? The lower part where the intestines is. So you do not use it on that part. But other parts which need to be cleansed, for example, cleansing the uh, blood technique where you put orange maybe into the lungs is okay, right? And even if the orange does travel to the appendix, it would be a very, very minute amount. And remember that part of the body does have orange. The no, question is, yeah. can we use orange in the appendix? Yeah, so that's what I'm yes saying. Yes or no? Yeah, but he says in the lungs it's used here. So that's yeah, why he's no. confused. Yeah. So in a different part of the body, you can use the orange, but not at the part which is affected. Because with appendix, if you put orange and if it bursts, then your patient would be in trouble. And so that's why we do not use orange at, uh, at that particular organ. Yeah. Other parts you can. Go ahead. Next one. I can answer that one in more detail. Go ahead. Hmm. Answer some. I refuse. Sure. Sure. Did I say no? You're the one saying no. But you didn't explain why you can't use orange in the appendix for appendicitis. I just said orange is uh, expelling so it might burst. That's one of the things I said. You want to add something more? Okay. Uh, you have to understand that uh, it is chronic appendicitis. It's appendicitis means it's inflamed, right? So there's a lot of dirty red energy. And you have to understand that the book is written for beginners. Initially, Masuchua wrote it in, in, in the, uh, for, uh, from the viewpoint that uh, people will read it and once or twice and start practicing. So if you use the wrong shade of orange, it will be very, very uh, detrimental to the appendix. Question is why? Um, Orange, uh, this is not in the book per se, but orange has a, a tendency to activate the chakra because it has some red in it. That's how you get orange, right? So when you use too, uh, too dark an orange or the wrong shade of orange, it will slightly activate the part where you're projecting before it expels, especially if you use a wrong shade of orange. And most people use a darker shade of orange. And the darker it is, the more uh, sort of activating it is. I don't want to go into how potent, detail, potent it is. Um, that is why initially, uh, even the Ming Main Chakra had light whitish orange uh, for hypertension in the earlier edition of the book. And but because it was meant for beginners, it was changed to light whitish blue because uh, Ming Main is already overactivated. So when you sweep with light whitish orange and you're using the wrong shade, what will happen is the Ming Main will get even more activated. Um, so the effect is not very good. And especially when appendicitis, every minute counts over here. So when you're using, uh, and the rate of pranic consumption is so high. So when you're using uh, orange and you don't use the right color, it will uh, overactivate the appendix because of the red or the activating nature of orange. Anyway. Oh. Uh, done, done, done. Okay, done. So everything. No. Do, do so exist some prana which is not required for our body? or system which may not be good at Yeah, there are lots of pranas like that. <laughs> anyway, let's move to the Why she Indigo goes. being one. Uh, does uh, let go relate to lighting up your basic Ming Ming, back solar, back heart, crowd? What? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Let go means... You know, you let, let go. go from here when, when you, you do release, the meditation. You let go is a form of releasing energy or consciousness. It's like the trust fall that you do when you do these community building workshops, right? So you, you stand on the table and then you 
you just have to let go and allow your body to fall back. Trust exercise. Trust exercise. So it's something like that. You just have to let go. You just have Another to Another word really, could be release. Let, so. Release, yeah. <clears throat> release, discharge, let go, whatever. <laughs> now we were going to start using discharge. It's like letting go of energy. Here I'm letting go of my pencil. That's it. When we meet you guys and you use the word discharge, we know you did the ethric double with us. <laughs> discharge. I discharge some money just. <laughs> Yes, with Swiggy. <laughs> Just start with Swiggy. Okay, okay let's end with uh, that. Sponge. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you, Varinder, for your nice comment. SpongeBob in the city. Yes, uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. All right. Does let go? Okay, yeah. This finish, one. Finish. This one. Uh, yeah, I said thank you, Varinder, for your comment. Okay, fine. Done. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Shawl. Yes. All right. So with that, we've come to uh, part of. The next chapter, the 11th is half done. So we'll meet you on Wednesday and we'll complete that and move to the next one. Yeah. Shall we? Close your eyes, connect down to the palate. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chokoksvi, to Lord Maha Guruji Neli. To all the great ones, to the beings of knowledge, light and power, to the great teachers, masters of theosophy, to the angels of communication and our respective Wi-Fi's, to our soul and divine self. We thank you all for your great, great blessings, for your presence, for your tremendous patience with us. Thank you for helping us gain a greater and deeper understanding of these teachings. Continue to help us to assimilate this knowledge and to use it to become better instruments in your service. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Inhale and exhale. <clears throat> Atma Namaste. Thank you everyone for being with us. <coughs> See you again on um, Wednesday. With reference to the 9th and 10th chapter, we're still working on it. So once we get some, no, some, what? Nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> once we find out how we can get this done for you, we will let you know. Thank you so much. Bye everybody. Yeah, bye. <laughs> Enjoy. Enjoy your no week. We'll see you on Wednesday. Oops, I forgot to. Sayonara. Yeah, that's first. We'll discharge for now. Yeah, let's discharge. We're by... discharging the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>